Wow, tough to top that one, huh? No pressure, you know? Good thing I didn't get a recall for a malfunction, right? <laughs> so I just want to start by just simply thanking you guys, you know? I think being able and having the opportunity to not only stay connected with the youth, the students, but with creative mind like you guys, it only helps us to become better marketers, right? So uh, the Endeavor team and I were talking about trying to figure out what could we share? What should we share, right? And then I thought to myself, there's nothing more excited about the future, right? And to me, the future is now. And I know many of us right now, the world is in an interspace, might be a little bit apprehensive about what the world that holds for us. But <clears throat> as a father of a beautiful three-year-old daughter, I understand that that not only comes with the responsibility, but with accountability to impact the world in a positive way, right? And I think as a marketers, we are gifted with the opportunity to touch consumers in a direct way, right? We all need the other support functions as finances, accounting, you know, especially the accounting teams that come after the marketers because we always overspend, right? But I think we're privileged. We're privileged to be able to to change the world by connecting with people, right? So today is a conversation. Uh, I'm going to share a little bit of you know, my journey, but also I want to keep it super open, you know, uh, and have this invitation to you guys to think about the future and how you can use your job to create a positive change, right? So um, first, you know, I was like, what is the theme, you know? And then I found this picture. Uh, my mom actually sent it to me a couple of months ago because for you guys that might know me, seeing my daughter, she's just like a copy of me. Uh, but I have a friend that he's, a, he's an artist. And then he, he gave me a, a painting and he, I asked him, his name is Macajon, right? Translated to English, it's noodles. Uh, I said, hey, how long did it take you to do this? He said, 37 years. Because as an artist, and I think as a person, as a marketer, we're constantly evolving, right? So I'm going to talk a, lot, a little bit about in the making since 1980. Yeah, I'm giving away my age, right? Uh, but it's okay. Uh, then, uh, the time for change in this new era, and that's where we're going to start going a little bit deeper in marketing. And this new era is heavily influenced by people not by brands. When you look at Kim Kardashian, 108 million followers, right? And I'm going to unpack some of the numbers behind that. It's incredible. There are some big, big brands that don't cut more than 5 million followers, right? So there's a huge shift in the power of creativity and in the power of influence in the world of marketing today. So I'm going to unpack those three pillars of today. And then please just jump in, ask questions, and just make a super conversation. So in the making of, you know, since 1980, right? For many of you guys know, I was born and raised in what we call a, a soccer crazy country, right? And I had a dream. I had a dream to become a professional soccer player. And I constantly pursued the dream, right? But that dream is a dream of just 200 million people, right? So... I prefer to stay with Dom and Dubber where it has one in a million chance <laughs> versus that one, right? And then, but as I went through life and pursuing this dream, a lot of things you start learning that at that time really doesn't make sense. And then you fast forward sometimes 10 years, 20 years down the road, you go back to an experience that you had, and you go, oh, now I know why I had to go through that, right? And I remember uh, when I was just... 12 years old, my practice was about an hour and a half away from home. And I wouldn't let my parents drive me because I said, this is my job. I will do that. And my parents would be crazy because they'll be worried about it. I'll be taking public transportation in Brazil, which sometimes is not the safest thing to do. But nobody told me that. And I had this mindset of going after the things I wanted. But then also, at age 14, I had another experience that it, today, it just hit me a couple of days ago. It's directly related with where I am. I was 14 years old, 
I was part of this team for about two years. It was a youth professional club, and we got a new coach. And the new coach says, hey, he used to call me Shorty. Don't know why. <laughs> uh, and he goes, hey, Shorty, we're going to move you off your position, but I think you're going to be great at playing outside right. And I'm like, OK. He's like, but I need you to work a little bit harder on crossing to make sure you're getting your players in front of the goal. And I would stay day in, day out after practice. I was working hard. Then we played three games. And then he cuts me from the team. And that made no sense to me. But I was caught. And what it meant is that I had to wait another six months to actually join another team. And at 14 years old, where you fall in your dream, that doesn't make sense. And then today, you know, I left Nike back in October, and I'm on the bench waiting 12 months until I can start my other job at Adidas, right? And it's interesting how life comes full circle sometimes. And that moment where I had to wait six months, it was actually the moment I worked hardest to become a better player. And the opportunity I've been given to teach at Irvine Center, to be here with you guys, is just an opportunity to make myself a better marketer, a better leader, and a better person. So this is just a little bit, you know, to go back to when I was 16 years old. I think some of you guys might have heard this story. Dad pulls me on the side. I got a youth professional soccer offer. I tell dad I'm going to drop out of school. And he goes, no, you're going to go back to school. And by the way, you're going to go to the United States. You're going to learn English. And you're going to think about life. And then you come back. <laughs> it's been 20 years. <laughs> my mom blames my dad to today. <laughs> oh, five years there left, never came back, right? She <laughs> so dad knew then what I did not know. Right? And that's the lesson I took from that. Football, for me, it was no longer just an end and a goal, but it was a means to open an incredible life. And because of soccer, I was able to get my education in the United States. I'm now part of the Clemson family. I'm part of the Urban Center. I, was, I lived in the Middle East in Africa. I moved to London. I went back to Brazil and then back in the US. And everything was always tied back to soccer. So the two things I've learned in this experience of leaving my dream, thinking that was over, it was the power of sports and education, right? And this is the stuff, the reasons why I choose the brands I work for. But also when Joe invited me to join the board, it was a no-brainer to me, right? So turning a different type of pro when I was 16 to 17 and when I graduated from Clemson where going professional soccer player didn't become a dream for me, I tie back to Tiger Woods. When you're a young kid and you're really dreaming and living like a professional soccer player, you lose your youth, right? But the mindset, the attitude, the work ethic, it's what carried you to become a different kind of pro. And that's the attitude that I bring to my life. Sidney Poitier is a guy that, you know, I've been doing a lot of reading lately, and I came across him. And he talks about his mindset. And he chooses his work as an expression of his values. For those who might not know, you know, he's the first Bohemian and African American to win an Academy Award at Oscars, right? And he used that as a catalyst to create a movement for the civil rights. But the important part of talking about him is that in the journey to become a leader, to become a marketer, or to become a better father, you have to ground yourself in what your values are. And this is what I've been doing the last three, four years of my life, and especially the last three months. And here are just a few that I always go back to. Excellence. And that comes from the mindset of an athlete. You don't have a second chance to miss when you miss a goal in a game to go to the referee and say, can I just replay that? Right? So when you do, when you go to deliver your work, deliver the best work you can for the first time. Right? Integrity, extremely important. Right? I always say, 
if there's something you're telling somebody that you shouldn't tell somebody else, you shouldn't be doing, right? So go back to integrity. Do the right things that make sense. You know, honesty, transparency, confidence. Changing the world constantly jerks us around. Just believe yourself. And then lastly is positivity, right? There's enough negativity around. So surround yourself, positive person, positive people, and that will carry you through. So talking about mindset, and now I'm going to start going a little bit more towards how, what does that mean? If you go back to taking your mindset on how you react to change, how you approach life, you're starting conveying the authentic you, right?